So let's quickly look at the irreversible enzyme inhibition. Irreversible enzyme inhibition. So irreversible, once you just look at the word irreversible, just in a word, it's something that cannot be undone. So an enzyme was inhibited. The enzyme can no longer carry out its activities. And this thing cannot be undone. You get it? So they said, write short notes on irreversible enzyme inhibition. So um, for the irreversible enzyme inhibition, we'll start from the definition, to the mechanism, to the examples, to the implications of this irreversible enzyme inhibition in, um, in um, what do you call it? Um... It is irreversible enzyme inhibition in medicine. So for the definition, we are saying irreversible enzyme inhibition involves the permanent inactivation of an enzyme. And this is due to the formation of a stable covalent bond between the inhibitor and the enzyme. That's what is inhibiting and the enzyme, okay? So this now prevents the enzyme from catalyzing its reaction. Some reactions that the enzyme is supposed to what? take part in. So now, because the enzyme is what inhibited, the enzyme cannot take part in those reactions, okay? So this will lead to what? A loss of the enzyme activity. So what is the mechanism? How is it done? How, we, how does it come to be? So irreversible inhibitors typically form a covalent bond with a specific word, amino acid residue, at the active site of the enzyme. So basically, they block the active site of the enzyme, okay? So when they block the active site of the enzyme, it could be that they blocked it all, or it could be that they just blocked part of it. But the substrate coming now can no longer will fit into the active site of the enzyme. You get it. So what are the examples? We have aspirin. So aspirin, it's irreversibly what inhibit the enzyme cyclooxygenase by acetylating what? Acetylating a serine residue, reducing the formation of what? Pro-inflammatory what? prostaglandins okay the penicillin it inhibits what bacterial transpeptidase enzymes preventing cell wall synthesis and leading to what bacterial cell death then organophosphates uh, they inhibit what acetylcholinesterase which is an enzyme crucial for nerve function so basically what they paralyze what the insect these organophosphates are, are used in all those shell talks so why you spray shell talks in a room and insect to die is because you have paralyzed those insects. Their nerves are no longer functioning. Okay. So now, um, if there's an inhibition of this acetylcholinesterase, it will lead to the accumulation of what acetylcholine and disruption of nerve signaling, because acetylcholine is released in the what nerve junction, also known as the synapse. Acetylcholinesterase is an enzyme there that will eat up the acetylcholine. To prevent the accumulation, but if the enzyme acetylcholinesterase is not there again, okay, so actually leads to what accumulation of this what acetylcholine. All right, then what is the implication of this what uh, studies in medicine? Um, it is used in drug design. So understanding the mechanism of what irreversible inhibitors helps in what designing drugs that can selectively and permanently inhibit target enzymes. Okay, then therapeutic use. Irreversible inhibitors are often used in conditions where what long-lasting inhibition of enzymes is beneficial, such as in the case of what aspirin for its anti-inflammatory and anti-thrombotic effect that it has. So irreversible inhibitors are powerful tool in both pharmacological uh, chemistry, okay, providing lasting effect by permanently what disabling a particular or specific enzyme type, okay. So that's E for what. Irreversible enzyme inhibition from the definition, the mechanism, the examples, and implications in medicine.